This unlikely femme fatale from Japan left behind countless broken hearts, empty wallets, and six dead men. When she was finally arrested, everyone wanted to know how she seduced all those men. This is the case of the chubby seductress, Miyuki Wida. Miyu Lee was born in Kuroyoshi, Japan in December 1973. She was raised in Totori in an ethnically Korean home where she was the youngest of two children. Her father was a construction worker and was known to be quiet and subdued. Her mother was a stay-at-home wife and had a terrible reputation in town. She was violent to her children and described as emotionally unstable. She was also easily recognizable because she wore unflattering thick pancake makeup. At some point during her life, Miyu started to use the Japanese name Miyuki Wida. As a child, she was a known troublemaker inside and outside of elementary school, and no one really liked her in the neighborhood. She would break into neighbors' houses to either break or steal things, and her behavior wasn't just a phase. In junior high, she bullied anyone weaker than her, manipulated, and lied to her classmates all of the time. Her family's reputation became so bad that they were shunned by their neighbors. Despite her bad behavior, her grades were good enough to be accepted into a high school with a nursing program, but she dropped out soon after. Miyuki then went on to work several odd jobs, including one at a marriage information center, but she didn't keep any jobs long. Soon after, she moved to Osaka and got married to her first husband and had two children. The couple would eventually divorce due to financial problems. She then moved back to Totori in 1996. Then she started working at a snack bar in front of a train station and that's how she met her second husband. Like her first marriage, she had a son and a daughter. Later, she started managing a snack bar she inherited from one of her relatives. Her second husband discovered that she was cheating on him with a regular customer and they got divorced. The snack bar later fell into financial troubles and was closed down. By the time she started working at another snack bar in 1999, she already had her fifth child and was living in an apartment that was filled with trash. In total, six people plus three dogs and five cats lived in an apartment that was only meant for two. She didn't make much money working at the snack bar, only around $500 a month, and wasn't getting any child support or government assistance. So, during the day, she worked as a cleaning lady at a hospital. Miyuki and her children lived in deplorable conditions. The house was so filthy and crowded, the kitchen was useless, so the children had to eat convenience store rice balls and bread almost exclusively. And just like her own mother, she was violent towards her children. In 1999, she started working at a snack bar called Jumbo. The bar only hired plus-size women, and by all accounts, she was popular with the patrons and charismatic. She wore tight mini skirts and always wore bright red lipstick. To bring in more money, Miyuki started scamming customers. She would seduce men and take them to love hotels to sleep with them. A few weeks later, she would tell them that she was pregnant and that they had to pay for the abortion. The price of the abortion she gave the men was usually double or triple the actual cost. There's something about Miyuki. Despite her appearance, Miyuki was a hit with the customers. She had a unique allure that had the men addicted. In 2001, a 28-year-old Miyuki met 43-year-old Tsukasa Furukawa at Jumbo. He was a newspaper reporter for the Yomiuri Shimbun and was assigned to the Totori branch two years prior. Miyuki and Tsukasa hit it off immediately and Tsukasa fell hard for the chubby hostess. He declared his love for her and when she started telling him sob stories of needing money to help her sick mother, he gladly helped. He was so in love with Miyuki that he moved out of his home with his wife and children and moved into Miyuki's dirty cramped apartment. Miyuki would always ask for money, but when she tapped him dry, Tsukasa started borrowing money from co-workers and even acquaintances that worked in the local government. He never explained why he needed to borrow so much money, only that he had his reasons. Miyuki managed to scam 20 million yen, or about 144,000 from Tsukasa. That was about twice his annual salary. He was so obsessed with Miyuki, he started asking his friends for ways to divorce his wife because he was certain that Miyuki was his soulmate. As a result, Tsukasa left his wife and two kids penniless. On the day that Tsukasa died on May 13, 2004, 
Miyuki first went to the police and filed a missing person report on Tsukasa. She then took her son with her to Tsukasa's job and made her son tell his boss that his father had gone missing after two of them got into a fight. Later that day, Tsukasa's body was found covered in the remains of a cardboard box. He'd been hit by a train. The note they found in the cardboard box said, I'm glad that I met Miyuki Wida. I learned about her true love. And with that note, the police ruled his death a suicide and an autopsy wasn't conducted. At the same time she met Tsukasa, she met 27-year-old Sinichi Fuura at Jumbo. And also like Tsukasa, he was smitten with Miyuki. He worked as a security guard and was described by his older brother as being timid and shy. Their relationship, however, was filled with violence. Shinichi began living with Tsukasa and Miyuki around 2002. She used him to watch her kids while she went out on dates. Miyuki would beat on Shinichi almost daily and treated him like a slave. She once beat him so badly with a frying pan that he fled to his mother's house. And like the typical abuser, Miyuki was able to convince Shinichi to return. She took all of his money and then forced him to write a fake IOU for thousands of dollars. In Japan, an IOU is a legally binding document stating that a debt is owed to someone with the promise of paying them back. On August 18, 2007, Shinichi went with Miyuki and her family to the beach near the Totori sand dunes to collect seashells. According to Shinichi's family, he was afraid of swimming, so it was a shock to his family when he was rushed to the hospital. He was found over 600 feet away from the shore in water that was 6 feet deep. He was rescued but died of post-resuscitation encephalopathy on August 27, 2007. His death was ruled an accident and no autopsy was performed. If there's one thing we've learned about Miyuki Wida is that the woman worked fast. Itaru Fujita was a detective for the Totori Perfectional Police. Around 2007, he met Miyuki after he came into Jumbo and questioned the employees for an investigation. It didn't take long before he became a regular customer and then started a relationship with Miyuki. He was married with children and soon began neglecting not only his family, but his job. Itaru's behavior changed so drastically that his superiors at the police department gave him a warning about his sloppy police work. Miyuki constantly borrowed money from Itaru and the pair got into regular arguments because Miyuki didn't believe he was giving her enough. In February 2008, Itaru was found hanging from a tree in the mountains. His death was ruled a suicide. In the same month that she killed Itaru, she met Kazumi Yabe who was a truck driver. Just like her other victims, he was a regular customer at Jumbo. This time, she had no time for romance as she planned on killing him that same month. On February 26, 2008, Miyuki visited Kazumi's apartment and cooked him lunch. He went to work right after eating but as he was driving, he lost consciousness and got into a one-car accident, though he wasn't injured. Not deterred from this failure, she tried again the next night. She spent the night at his house and then gave him a beer to drink. He immediately fell asleep and a fire broke out. Luckily, he escaped, but he had to stay at the hospital for several days due to smoke inhalation. Once he was discharged and returned home, he noticed that his closet was ransacked and the IOU that stated Miyuki owed him 2.7 million yen or $19,500 was missing. Kazume called the police and explained what happened, and they took the beer cans for testing, but the police never followed up on the test. On April 11, 2009, Kazumi's naked body was found in the middle of the ocean near a coastal town in the Totori prefecture. It was discovered during his autopsy that sleeping pills were in his system. The coroner also found sand in Kazumi's lungs. It was only when Miyuki was later arrested that it was revealed that she lured Kazumi to the beach with the promise of paying him back. Hideki Moriyama met Miyuki at Jumbo, but they weren't dating. At this point, Miyuki was dating 46-year-old Ando Gido, a used car salesman who was just as big a scammer as Miyuki. Hideki was wooed by Miyuki's sob story of being a single mother with five kids and only a small salary. This moved the electronics store owner enough that he delivered $10,000 worth of appliances on credit to Miyuki's home. At some point, Ando started living with her. Of course, Miyuki and Ando had no intentions of paying Hideki back and sold everything. On the day of his murder on October 6, 2009, 
he told his family that he was going to Miyuki's house to collect the money. He was found the next day face down in the Mani River with injuries to his face. His autopsy revealed that Hideki had sleeping pills in his system. His death wasn't immediately connected to Miyuki. While Kazumi Taguchi was a customer at Jumbo, he was the only one that actually lived in Miyuki's neighborhood. They were close enough that he gave her a spare key to his apartment and he used to babysit her children. Kazumi was on disability benefits due to suffering a stroke in 2009. One day in September 2009, Kazumi got into a fender bender while driving Miyuki's car. Miyuki told Kazumi that he was responsible for the other person's car repair and medical expenses, but it was all a ploy to steal money from his disability check. As time went by, Kazumi's health began to deteriorate and he started to complain that he felt dizzy. On October 26, at home with his family, Kazumi suddenly collapsed and died at the hospital later that night. But this time, she got sloppy. On the night that Kazumi died, one of his family members witnessed Miyuki and Ando laugh while giving Kazumi a pill. This family member told police what he saw and an autopsy revealed that there were sleeping pills in his system. For the first time ever, Miyuki was under police scrutiny. However, because Kazumi had heart disease, they couldn't determine if the sleeping pills were the cause of his death, and his death was concluded that he died of illness. I know that this is confusing. Here's a helpful chart of her murder victims to stay on track. Catch fraud, not feelings. Miyuki Wida was a busy woman. Between all of the murders, she committed about 10 different scams that we know of. But we won't be able to list all of the crimes she committed, so we'll go over some of the most notable. In 2006, she scammed a friend's mother for 1.26 million yen by claiming that her son owed Miyuki the money. She also met her live-in boyfriend Ando Gido through scamming in 2007. She lied to him and said that she was pregnant with triplets. Miyuki then demanded 30 million yen, 10 million yen for each triplet. Ando left his wife, children, and job and moved in with Miyuki. She then claimed that she miscarried the triplets and he believed that story up until they were arrested. Described as having a gentle personality, he was bullied and forced to do chores and errands for Miyuki. However, Ando wasn't a hapless victim. The pair committed various crimes, including defrauding the agricultural equipment company of tractors and various equipment, stole multiple motorbikes, and stole money from her landlord's house. Miyuki's luck finally ran out on November 2nd, 2009, when Ando and Miyuki were arrested for defrauding her friend's mother back in 2006. She was later released, but the police never stopped investigating her due to her fraudulent activities. That's how they finally saw the pattern of death that surrounded her. On January 28, 2010, she was arrested for the murder of her fifth victim, Hideki Murayama. By May 10th, she was also charged with the murders of Kazumi Yabe and Shinichi Furuta. The police discovered that the sleeping pills in her victim's system had a very similar makeup. The police got their big break when an anonymous couple told them that they gave Miyuki their sleeping pills. The couple's remaining pills were tested and it was confirmed that those pills were the same kind that were found inside of Miyuki's victims. And while there is strong circumstantial evidence to link Miyuki to the other deaths, she couldn't be charged for them due to no autopsy being taken on two of her victims. In Japan, 99% of all bodies are cremated, so there are no bodies to exhume for additional testing. How in the world did Miyuki seduce these men? One question that all of our sources asked was how in the world did Miyuki seduce so many men? She wasn't exactly the prettiest woman and in no way met the Japanese standard of beauty of being petite, pretty, and polite. By all accounts, she was a loud, raunchy woman that wore bright red lipstick and wore short miniskirts. One man who possibly escaped a fate worse than being scammed explained her methods. He said that he met Miyuki in 2005 and they were sexually active from the beginning. She was the one that suggested the love hotel and he states that he never met a woman that was so confident that suggested going to a love hotel first. Soon after, she got her children to start calling him dad and her son asked the anonymous man to live together. After that, she started asking for money for fake hospital visits, plumbing, and other bills. He said that he spent nearly 3 million yen or about $21,000 on Miyuki and her family. He ended up getting into debt and Miyuki even lied and told him that she was pregnant. 
the man finally came to his senses after a few years when he learned about Miyuki's living boyfriend. Miyuki knew to go after men that were going through marital problems or appeared weak. She was a listening ear, offering practical, friendly advice, or would just be a shoulder to cry on. She love-bombed all of her victims, lavishing them with attention, affection, and lengthy love letters and emails until those men believed that she truly cared for them. She was also sexually aggressive, which was a surprise to the men. So to some of these men, Miyuki must have been a fresh of breath air. And to those she wasn't romantically interested in, she was able to scam them using pity. She presented herself as a single mom who worked two jobs, who loved her kids and never stopped providing for them, even though she had a low-paying job. The Trial Ando's trial started on September 25, 2010, and he was indicted on six counts of fraud. On October 22, 2010, he was convicted of six counts of fraud and received three years and six months in prison. It would take two more years before Miyuki went to trial. In that trial, Ando testified against Miyuki and confessed to giving her sixth victim sleeping pills. In December 4, 2010, Miyuki Wida was convicted of two counts of murder and sentenced to death. She appealed her sentence three times, with the final appeal being denied July 17, 2017. As of the making of this video, Miyuki is still on death row. Thank you for watching The Twin Files. Please like and subscribe, it really means a lot to us. If you like this video, watch this video about a host club owner who was killed by his angry employees, and he might have deserved it.